me dit que Kerouac a employé ce mot euh, il y a longtemps euh, dans le sens de béatitude. The subject for tonight's discussion, is there a beat generation? It is a subject of considerable interest on many college campuses, particularly urban universities. It is of literary interest, of interest as a social phenomenon, and some would consider as a symptom of the alienation which many young people experience in trying to adapt to the standards of the problems of our society in this anxious age. We, our first speaker is a man who has been called the spokesman of the Beat Generation, although it is my understanding that he dislikes this title. He's a native of Lowell, Massachusetts, a former student at Columbia University, author of numerous articles and books, including The Town and the City, On the Road, Subterraneans, and most recently, The Dharma Bum. I am pleased to present Mr. Jack Kerouac. How well, close? The, the question is very silly because we should be wondering tonight, is there a world? But I could go and talk for five, ten, twenty minutes about is there a world? Because there is really no world. Because sometimes I'm walking on the ground and I see right through the ground. And there is no world. You'll find out. But they asked me to write an article about the beat generation. And uh, it fits right in with the, with the question of the theme. It's called the beat generation. And it's, the article is supposed to be about my relationship of the, the beat generation. Very funny article. Well, I never made a speech, so I'll read it. Okay? This article necessarily will have to be about myself. I'm going all out. That nutty picture of me on the cover of On the Road results in the fact that I had just gotten down from a high mountain where I'd been for two months completely alone. And usually I was in the habit of combing my hair, of course, because you have to ride the highway and all that. You usually want girls to look at you as though you were a man, not a wild beast. No commas yet. <laughs> I'm like Oscar Levin, I gotta hold my heart. <laughs> but my poet friend Gregory Corso opened his shirt and took out a silver crucifix that was hanging from a chain and said, Wear this and wear it outside your shirt and don't comb your hair. So I spent several days around San Francisco going around with him and others like that to parties, parties, parks, jam sessions, bars, poetry readings, churches. Walking, talking poetry in the streets, walking, talking God in the streets. At one point, a strange gang of Ufans got mad and said, What rights he got to wear that? My own gang of musicians and poets told him to cool it. Why don't you come back in a million years and tell me all about it, Angel? Recently, Ben Hecht said to me on TV, Why are Frank speak out your mind? What's wrong with this country? Why is everybody afraid of? Was he talking to me? And all he wanted me to do was speak out my mind against people. He sneeringly brought up Dulles, Eisenhower, the Pope, all kinds of people like that. Eventually that he would sneer at with Drew Pearson. Against the world he wanted, this is his idea of freedom, he calls it freedom. But who knows, my God, but that the universe is not one vast sea of compassion, actually? Veritable holy honey? Beneath all this show of personality and cruelty? In fact, who knows but that it isn't the solitude of the oneness of the essence of everything. Mama? The solitude of the actual oneness of the unbornness of the unborn essence of everything. Mama? Nay! The true pure foreverhood. That big blank potential that can ray forth anything it wants from its pure store. That blazing bliss. Mati Vajra Karuna. Transcendental diamond compassion. This is why should I attack what I love out of life? This is deep. Live your lives out? Ah, love your lives out. And when 
money come and stone you, at least you won't have a glass house. It's your glass of flesh. <laughs> but that wild eagle pictures me on the cover of a book on the road, where I look so beat, goes back much further than 1948, when John Clellan Holmes, author of Gold, and the Horn, good book, The Horn, and I was sitting around trying to think up the meaning of the lost generation, subsequent existentialism, and, and uh, I said, you know, John, this is really a beat generation. And he leapt up and said, that's it, that's right. Maybe since I'm supposed to be the spokesman of the beat generation, I am only the originator of the term and around it the term and the generation taken shape. It should be pointed out that all this beat guts, because they're out guts, right? Therefore, it goes back to my ancestors. <laughs> this is silly. This is paranoid. Thank <laughs> you.